Shalom. We are continuing now with Psalm 78, and because of the length of this psalm, 72 verses, I will not read the entire selection, but instead I will read a few verses from it and summarize the rest and highlight the themes that I find most important. The psalm begins like this. A maskil of Asaf, give ear, my people, to my teaching. Turn your ear to what I say. I will expound a theme, hold forth on the lessons of the past, things we have heard and known that our fathers have told us. We will not withhold them from their children, telling the coming generation the praises of the Lord and his might and the wonders he performed. He established a decree in Jacob, ordained a teaching in Israel, charging our fathers to make them known to their children, that a future generation might know, children yet to be born, and in turn tell their children, that they might put their confidence in God and not forget God's great deeds, but observe his commandments, and be not like their fathers, a wayward and defiant generation, a generation whose heart was inconstant, whose spirit was not true, to God. We are urged by the psalmist to teach our children about God's greatness, about God's strength, and about God's love for God's people. We are warned against following the ways of our ancestors, who, in spite of all the chances they had, continue to turn their backs on God and ignore God's commandments. So there's a very strong emphasis here on teaching our children so that they may teach their children and future generations about God, God's greatness, and God's wonders, and as a result, to remember to observe God's mitzvot, God's commandments. In the following verses, the psalmist goes on to recount the stories of the wanderings of the Israelites in the desert, how God showered them with blessings and favors, how God time and time again intervened in order to rescue God's people from hunger and thirst and destruction. And even with all that, they still ignored God, turned their backs, and continued to lack faith. The psalmist also brings up continual punishments and consequences that God inflicted upon God's people. And even then, they did not learn their lesson. And so we have first a description of all the good things that God did for the Israelites, and then a description of the punishments that ensued when the people ignored God's blessings, turned their backs on God's commandments, And even after all the punishments and consequences, they still didn't learn their lessons. So our ancestors were far from perfect. And also we are far from perfect. But in spite of all that, the psalmist teaches us to stick with ourselves and to stick with God knowing that we are beings who are often sinful, the psalmist urges us, bids us, to stick with our faith and to hold on to the belief that God will always forgive sin. Verse 38 is a central verse in this psalm. But he, being merciful, forgave iniquity and would not destroy. 
He restrained his wrath time and again and did not give full vent to his fury. In other words, historically, God punished God's people when they did wrong, but he never allowed God's self to destroy them entirely. He always gave them second and third and fourth and a seemingly endless number of chances to do better. In the same way, we are reminded that God's basic nature is merciful. And this verse, verse 38, is an echo of the verses called the 13 attributes emphasizing God's mercy described in the book of Exodus when Moses was on Mount Sinai receiving the Ten Commandments. This verse, verse 38, is also the first verse that opens the daily evening services. Vahurachum yechaperavon velo yashrit. He being merciful forgave iniquity and would not destroy. With the exception of Friday night of the Sabbath of Shabbat, this verse opens every evening service of the regular week. And it is really understood in the present sense, present tense rather. But God being merciful forgives iniquity and would not destroy. He restrains his wrath time and again and does not give full vent to his fury in the present tense. And why do we open the evening service with this? Well, I believe one reason is because we are completing our day and we are aware that during our daytime hours we have committed transgressions, we have allowed our shortcomings to take over, we have followed the Yetzer Hara, the evil inclination. In other words, we certainly recognize that we could have done better. And so in reviewing the day and heading towards the nighttime, the evening, we recognize that even though we are imperfect. God forgives. God is merciful. God will give us another chance the following day to do better. And also, perhaps out of a little bit of a sense of superstition, we recognize that as we are heading into the evening and about to turn in for the night a few hours later, that Nighttime and sleep time is a particularly vulnerable time. People can die in their sleeps, in their sleep. People's souls, it is believed, at least traditionally, um, fly away from their body temporarily as they dream. And while their body is sleeping, their soul is separated and going somewhere else. And the hope and wish is that their soul will return to their body, and allow their body to awaken the next morning. So it is a vulnerable time, nighttime. And that is the time when we turn to God and recognize and thank God for being so infinitely merciful. And that too is a message that we want to teach our children. We want to remind our children and have them remind their children that we can't expect ourselves to be perfect, but we can hope to do better each and every day. And we can recognize that God also doesn't expect us to be perfect. Only God is a perfect, infinite being. But because of our higher state of consciousness as opposed to other creatures whom God created, we can recognize our imperfection, and we can do better. As we exist now and cope with the nighttime of this pandemic, we remind ourselves constantly that as we struggle through this and find ways to cope through these difficult times, we may not be doing as best as we can we can do better, but we hold on to the faith and belief in ourselves that we will try harder each and every day, and in so doing, 
draw ever close to God, to the infinite being. Thank you.